So I believe what God has done, he's going to do it again. Thank you so much for taking your time, putting your efforts into uh, this seminar. You, will, you, will, you, are not, you are not going to regret. Um, the, the commitment and the interest that is so wide, it, 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 it's evidence that this is a long, long overdue training. And, and yet Sabbath school, it's, 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 it's one um, very, very important component of our church department and, and program. Everyone who comes, the first person that you meet as church is a superintendent. The, pro the first program is Sabbath school. The, if we were to tell the truth, there is no, there is no program, there is no department as important as the Sabbath school. But it's not that much uh, uh, respected and 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 given all the respect and the time that 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 that, that it deserves. So today we have. Um, our GC personnel in the person of Pastor Ebenezer Daniel. He's going, to, he's going to take us through. I've been with the man um, in the past. I've listened to his presentation. Um, he is, he is the man. He is the man. Let me just pray and then and then and let him take over. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again that you have allowed us to have this awesome time so that we can be sharpened um, and be prepared to, to be better instruments in your service. We commit your main servant, Elder Daniel, who is going to take us through. Oh, Father, cover him with your glory. Give him the wisdom from above as, as he ministers to us. May the Holy Spirit minister to him. Thank you, Father, for the privilege which none of us deserve. I pray for every listener every, that, that, is, that, that is on board. May we, may, may, be, we, may we be inspired. May we be uh, 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 motivated to do even much better than what we have done in the past. Uh, we ask all this in the name that we know best, in the name that we love the most. The name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Over to you, Elder Daniel. Thank you so much, my man, for taking your time. Kill it one time. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elder. It's amazing to meet you again, by God's grace. Thank you. And thank I was you. truly blessed by past three days uh, uh, attending this workshop. So much we did learn uh, from the, both the presentation that we had Monday and uh, uh, Tuesday. Uh, we like to focus today. Our presentation will focus on the Sabbath school teacher as a soul winner or a disciple maker. So we are going to zero down to teacher training today. I would like to encourage you uh, to keep your mics muted throughout the meeting when we have the session to answer questions, it'd be much easier. Please do remind yourself to mute your mics and you'll be instructed throughout the meeting. If possible, i like to encourage you, if possible, have a piece of pen, a paper and a pen. Have a paper or notepad and a pen. Grab something very quickly. It is going to be very useful for you having a, a notepad or a paper and a pen with you. It'll be much helpful for you to focus and concentrate when you are writing something. So please help yourself to grab a piece of paper and a pen. The reason I'm saying this, one, it's going to help you to focus. The second, you may get, get some great ideas while you're listening to the presentation. Some great thoughts may come. Something that you would like to do in your Sabbath school. So don't trust your memory. Write down immediately. So have a pen and paper to write down your great thoughts. And it will also be useful if you get some questions while I'm presenting, you have some questions, 
write down those questions in a piece of paper. Probably at the end, you'll be able to ask those questions as well. You know, uh, if possible, if we happen to finish this presentation and this question and session on time, I would like to very briefly talk to you about the global TMI disciple making evangelism, which is very much connected to what we are talking. Maybe it'll take 15 minutes. If we finish earlier, after the question and session, I'll run through that one quickly. Uh, those who would like to stay, please feel free to stay as well. Let me share my screen with you and we'll begin our presentation now. I have titled uh, today's presentation, The Sabbath School Teacher as a Disciple Maker or Soul Winner. Let me begin by asking a question to you. Why do you need Sabbath school? Do we still need Sabbath school? Do you think Sabbath school is still useful and helpful to us? Maybe I'll encourage you to write down your answer now. Maybe yes or no. Yes, we still need Sabbath school. Or I think very few may write we don't need. And also the second part of the question, I want you to write down, why do you think we need Sabbath school? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, please write down, why do you think the Sabbath school is needed and it is useful and helpful? In case, if you're writing, no, we don't need Sabbath school, please do write, why do you think Sabbath school is not important or needed for you? Maybe when we come midway of a presentation, we will find an answer to this question, but it'll be nice for you to write down now your answer. I believe some of you are writing. Now, the Gospel Commission that is recorded in Matthew 28, 19 says, go make disciples. The Gospel Commission is the basis for our mission of the church. The mission is to go Go make disciples. Every department in the church and every ministry in the church are responsible to ensure that this mission, the gospel mission, is fulfilled through their activities. The same way, the Sabbath school is also responsible to make sure this mission of the church, the gospel commission, go make disciples, is fulfilled through their department and their uh, ministry. But the Gospel Commission also includes something very important. You read that in verse 20, Matthew 28, 20, which says, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. The Gospel Commission includes, there is a work that need to be done after the baptism. You may call that as, a continual education a program. This is the command of Jesus Christ. When someone is baptized, there is something called teaching them to observe all things that even includes somebody become soul winner. So the Gospel Commission is including the continual education a program. Now you follow how Jesus Christ trained and taught his disciples. You read in Mark chapter one, verse 17, then Jesus said to them, follow me, I will make you become fishes of men. Now, when Jesus Christ invited his disciples to follow him, Jesus promised to say, I'm going to train you. I'm going to make you the fishes of men. So when individuals join our church through baptism, now we are responsible now to make them to become fishes of men. So the end goal of the disciple making process to ensure that someone who join the church now becomes an active soul winner. When there is no continual education program. What happens to a church? If there is no, 
there is no disciple making there is no an education after someone takes baptism what really happens the first and foremost we may face a serious retention problem in some of the world part of the world we know uh, there are many who get baptized leave the church uh, very quickly if an individual joining the church through baptism if there is no continual education program if there is no disciple making process in place the individual who made the decision loses the purpose and also the motivation to be part of this great church moment let me give an example to you now um, we have to thank our union sabbath school personal ministry director the sabbath school personal ministry director and also the division who have put this training in place the three days amazing training three days training in place we all very enthusiastically join this training just imagine there is no plan in place after this training um, the teachers who are attending the sabbath school superintendent who are attending this training have no plans to take this training back to the local churches if there is no plan to go and discuss with your Sabbath school council, if there is no plans, you going and sharing this with your board. Just imagine the union director, the division directors have no plans to train the pastors to make sure there is a follow up. If there is no such plan, unfortunately, the three precious days of evening meeting is being wasted. So, continual education program is essential to ensure there is success in what we are doing. So the goal of the continual education program is to prepare disciple makers. That is our goal. So we have to understand there is work beyond baptism. There is a work that needs to be done beyond baptism. The question comes to us, very important question that comes to us, when and where and who can do this work. Hope you're following the thoughts. Someone has made decision, he joined the church, and there is a need as the Gospel Commission commands us that we have to teach them to observe all things that Jesus commanded. If there is no a continual education program in our church, what really happens, we know we may find individuals losing interest and motivation and purpose being in the church. But the question comes, who is responsible? Where does this continual education program takes place? Probably most of the time, we may answer by saying that we have a weekly divine service that has been organized to help people to grow. But listen what Ellen White says in Testimonies for Churches, Volume 6, page 431. She says, it is evident that all the sermons that have been preached have not developed a large class of self-denying workers. So something that is missing in our divine service, which is not truly contributing to help members to become a self-denying worker, simply means a disciple of Jesus Christ or a soul winner. So the question comes to us, where, when, who does this work? This is a powerful quotation. I think both the nights we have this quotation has been, uh, been reminded to us. In Council on Sabbath School Work, page 9, Ellen White writes, the influence growing out of Sabbath School work should improve and enlarge the church. The influence, the, the inspiration begins from the Sabbath School. The work that begins from Sabbath school helps the church to grow both numerically and also spiritually. So the disciple making begins at Sabbath school. The continual education program begins at Sabbath school. The Sabbath school really helps individual to grow. When the Sabbath school improves, the church improves. When the Sabbath school grows, church grows. The Sabbath school actually is an indicator for the church to really to know whether the church is mission focused. 
in Sabbath school really helps us to understand whether we are fulfilling the mission of the church. The Sabbath school also allows the members to invite their friends and their neighbors to the church. The first place where one learns to engage in mission is Sabbath school. So Sabbath school is a place where there is a lot of training, there is a lot of coaching and mentoring and development takes for an individual member. When we read from the church manual, it says, page 103, the Sabbath school, the primary religious education program of the church. Powerful it is. So we know both from this inspiration of the Bible, from the spirit of prophecy, even the church manual clearly reminds us it is the Sabbath school that provides the continual religious education for every member for them to grow. Why so? Because the Sabbath school has the study, the fellowship, the community outreach, and also the world mission. So Sabbath school, the best place for disciple making, the best place for disciple making. The mission of the church is the mission of the Sabbath school. The mission of the church is the mission of Sabbath school. But let's look at what is the reality. What is the real condition of our uh, Sabbath school present? We have to look into it, some part of the world. Now, this is the uh, study that was being done across the globe. You'll notice every week, every week, an average, we have only less than 50% of them are attending the Sabbath school, less than 50%, 45%. Some place it can be more, some place it can be less, but less than 50% of them are attending Sabbath school. But now question I want to ask you, probably you could write down the answer for this question. How will you evaluate your local church Sabbath school? Take a minute, write the piece of paper that you have. How will you evaluate your local church Sabbath school? Look into the numbers, your act. Are we really merely focusing the attendance to measure the Sabbath school? Is it merely based on how many attend the Sabbath school or it is more than that? How will you measure the effectiveness of your Sabbath school. Let me give another example to you now. I noticed, I'm not sure how many are there today, we had well, over 100 the first day, the second day over 200 people participated. Great, great meetings, um, amazing promotion, amazing response from our membership. But how will you evaluate the success of this Sabbath school training that has been conducted past three days? If we are going to focus only based upon the number of attendees, we may be saying it is great success, but we have to go a little further to measure the success of this training. I'm talking about this Sabbath school training that has been conducted past three days, how we will measure the success of this training. Now we have to go a little further, how we will measure not just based upon how many are attending this meeting, but how many of them who are attending the meeting are going to take this training to the local church? How many of them are going to implement what they are learning here? How many churches are going to see a great change in what's happening? So the success of this training and the success of Sabbath school is not just merely focused on number of people attending, but it is more than that. Whether there is a change, whether there is a cultural change, whether there is a transformation, is there a change in people's life that is actually going to measure the success of the Sabbath school? Let's read what Ellen White says. She says, how sad it is to think of the great amount of mechanical work that is done in the Sabbath school while there is a little evidence that there is a moral transformation in the souls of those who are 
teaching and also those who have been taught. Sad it is. So the Sabbath school success is not just merely measured upon those who are attending the Sabbath school or number of people attending the Sabbath school, but whether the lives of people are changed as a result of them coming to the Sabbath school. The Sabbath school goal is to help people to experience that change, the transformation in the life. The transformation is simply talking about helping people to become disciple makers, soul winners, consecrated Christian. That is our focus. So the goal of Sabbath school is moral transformation. We have to all constantly measure whether this goal has been achieved through our Sabbath school. If this goal is achieved, if people who are attending Sabbath school are changing, the lives are being changed, they're becoming soul winners, they're becoming disciple makers, then even if we may have few in number, still a Sabbath school is successful. Moral transformation is the heart of disciple making. But there is no, I want you to carefully listen to this, but there is no moral transformation in the absence of mission. Without mission, there is no real change can take place in people's life. Mission, engaging in mission helps us to practice our faith. It helps us to grow. Let's see what um, Ellen White has to say. Now, before that, let's read from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. Paul says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, is not in speech. Sabbath school is not all about talking, but it is action. So the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Ellen White says, God could have reached his object in saving sinners without our aid. The gospel commission God can fulfill with angels, but in order for us to develop a character like Christ, we must share in his work. So the moral transformation, the character development, disciple making uh, will not take place in absence of someone not engaging in the work of God. Again, she writes, Christian character can be symmetrically and completely form only when human agent regard it as a privilege to work in proclamation of the truth and to sustain the cause of God with means. The Christian character development, the moral transformation is possible only when members engage in the proclamation of the truth. When they participate in the mission, then you see how they're able to develop by the grace of God. Now, absence of mission makes Sabbath school purposeless. When there is no mission focused in the Sabbath school, Sabbath school becomes purposeless. Now, as we go further, we understand when we think about this task, this objective, this mission of Sabbath school, mission of the church to help people to uh, grow in Christ, to become soul winners, to become disciple makers, to, to have a moral transformation in their life, to develop a Christ-like character, that may sound to us as a huge task to accomplish. But we have a promise. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, we read, but Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Through the grace of God, through his strength and through the power of the Holy Spirit, this is possible. John chapter 14, verse 12, we read, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. The way Christ was able to teach, the way Christ was able to change people's life, the same way Christ followers can do. And he goes on to say, and greater work then these he will do because I go to my father. What a promise we have. We should never lose heart. Jesus promised to say, if you follow me faithfully, you can do what I'm doing, but you can also do more than what I do because 
I go to my father. What Christ means by that, he says, I'm promising the Holy Spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to help people to have the change of life. We will be able to make people true disciple makers. We'll be able to make people to be great soul winners. Now, we talked about the Sabbath school having the continual religious education program, which is so important for, for a person to grow in Christ. The Gospel Commission is not just merely focusing on go and baptize. It says after you baptize, you have to teach men and women to observe all things that I command you. And we know the Sabbath school is a place where this religious education can be taught. But among the Sabbath school, the one who is able to do much more than anybody else is the teacher. In the book called Soul Winning Teacher, the author says, greater than any other factor in the Sabbath school is a teacher. The teacher can make the difference. You may ask the question, why teacher? Why not Sabbath school superintendent? Why not the pastor? Why not the elder? Why do you say teacher can make a big difference? Let's, let's, let's see about Jesus Christ. You read in Acts of Apostles, Page seven, Ellen White writes, Jesus Christ is the greatest teacher. For three years and a half, the disciples were under the instruction of the greatest teacher, that is Jesus Christ, the world has ever known. But how did Jesus was able to teach his disciples? What made him to be a greatest teacher? Then she goes on to write, by personal contact and association, Christ train them for his service. The greatest teacher of the world is able to teach his students through personal contact and association. Why Jesus, the greatest teacher, why do we consider Jesus to be a greatest teacher, ordinary carpenter's son? Would he not go to any religious school? How Christ taught differently from Pharisees? Jesus Christ came close to people. He had a personal contact with people. He had a personal touch with people. Through that personal touch, through the personal contact, Jesus was able to help people to become like him, like a soul winner. Same way, the Sabbath school teachers have personal contact with the members. The Sabbath school teacher able to meet with its members or students on a weekly basis. Every week, the Sabbath school teacher meets with them. The Sabbath school teacher has a personal interaction with the students. There is a communication between the teacher and the students on a weekly basis. The Sabbath school teacher has a personal knowledge about the biblical understanding and the spiritual condition of the members. I doubt Anybody else have this advantage what the teacher has? A weekly meeting, a weekly contact, a weekly interaction, a personal knowledge about the biblical understanding. What is my student? How, how, how much the member knows about the Bible truths? What is the true spiritual condition? The Sabbath school teacher has that knowledge. That makes the Sabbath school teacher different. No one has the personal contact with the members like the Sabbath school teacher. The Sabbath school teacher has more personal contact. Now let's come closer to the presentation now. So we know through what we have gone through so far, the Sabbath school is the best place for disciple making. The teacher is the best person. Why do we see, why do we say Sabbath school is the best place? Because all the essential feature for disciple making is, is found in Sabbath school. The study of the scripture, the prayer, the fellowship, the local outreach, the global outreach, every aspect that is essential for disciple making, every aspect that is required to help someone to grow in Christ 
everything that is needed to help someone to become soul winner, everything is found in Sabbath school. Now, we also know from what we have been looking previously, the teacher is a best person to, to make this possible because of the personal contact the teacher has with the students. There are two essentials now. Two essential things that we need to understand. In order for the teacher to become a disciple-making teacher or in order to help the teacher to become a soul winner, there are two important things that we have to consider. First, the character of the person, the teacher, is very important. The second, the teaching, teaching methodology the teacher is using. So we are going to, next couple of um, sections, we are going to look into the uh, the importance of the character of the person, the teacher, and we're also going to look into it, what methodology the teacher must use in order to make the Sabbath school effective. First, the Sabbath school teaches character. Why is the character of the teacher is important? Let's read a couple of texts. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no one despise a youth, but be an example to the believer. This is an admonition that Paul is giving to young minister Timothy. Paul says, be careful. Your example to believers is so important, both in your word and also in your conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and purity. So, the teacher, in order to become successful, it is important that teacher is having an exemplary character. Now, in Ministry of Healing, page 469, Ellen White says, what a man is as more influence than what he says. So even an uh, ordinary average teacher who may not have great teaching skills will be able to accomplish much more than a trained teacher who has the Christ-like character in them. So what a man is more important than what he says. Ellen White again writes, it is our own character and experience that will determine our influence upon others. It is our own character and our experience will determine our influence upon others. It is not our knowledge. It is not that what we know. It is not our biblical skills, but it is our character and our experience with God will help us to have an influence upon on others. In order to convince others about the power of God's grace, we should have experienced the power in our own life. In order to present the power of gospel effectively, we have to demonstrate that that power, the transforming power of God's gospel has changed our own life. So it is very important that we have that influence. Again, she, she writes in Christ's Object Lesson, page 340, character is power. The silent witness of a true unselfish Godly life carries an almost irresistible influence. This is a powerful one. Character is power. When, when there is a right, correct character is there, when there is Christ-like character is presented through the life of a teacher, the students will, will see a great influence and the influence cannot be resisted. Powerful this is. She goes on to write, Councils on Sabbath School, work, page 98 to 99, a correct Christian character exemplified in the daily life will do a great work in the character building of the class. So when our goal is character building, our goal is moral transformation, our goal to help our student to become disciple makers, our goal to help our members to become soul winners. And that is possible through a correct character. When the teacher presents a correct character, then the class students will also develop the same character. And far more than all the teachings, this 
will be quite useful and helpful. A teacher without a correct character will, I'm sorry, teacher with a correct character will have an irresistible influence on the members. We need to have an influence on our members. We would like our members to come regularly for the Sabbath school. We want them to be present there and that is possible by the teacher. Now, many of us talk about after COVID, uh, many are not choosing to come to church for Sabbath school, but I believe strongly if the teacher presents themselves with the character of Jesus Christ, they'll be able to attract more members coming back to church. That's my strong conviction. But we talked about having a correct character, but Bible also gives us a model for us to follow. In page, in book called Education, page 71, 74, Ellen White writes, in the teacher sent from God, heaven gave to men its best and greatest. So as a Sabbath school teacher, we have an example to follow. The best example that we have, the greatest example that we have, Jesus Christ will be and should be our example to follow as a teacher. She goes on to write, what Christ was every Christian should strive to be. In holiness, in winsomeness of character, he is our model. Powerful this is. Both in holiness and winsomeness, Christ is our model. So when a student, when a teacher makes effort to be like Christ, he is able to, she is able to, to exhibit the same quality of Jesus Christ that wins people to the kingdom of God. The teacher is able to win people for the kingdom of God through the correct character. Now, there are a couple of things I would like to highlight to you. We talked about character's power. We talked about Jesus is our model. Now, from the life of Jesus Christ, we would like to see what really um, stood out in Jesus' life and his character that we could also model to our students. First is loving and lovable. Loving and lovable. In the book called Education, page 16, we read, love, the basis of creation and redemption, is the basis of true education. In absence of love, there is no education. A teacher has to demonstrate that love of Christ through their teaching and also through their life. Because in the absence of true divine love, there is no possibility of true education. Yes, you read in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. God draws us to him through his love. The same way a student or teacher who follows Jesus Christ will also draw men to the Holy Scripture by demonstrating the same loving kindness of Jesus Christ. In the class, while we're teaching, keeping this, the members coming to our classes, all those are possible through, through this loving kindness. No other teacher ever allowed their students as Jesus did. Jesus had Pharisees, the publicans, the sinners, you name it. But everyone received that unconditional love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ truly loved his followers. I would like to ask the question, as a teacher, do you have the same love that Jesus had for us? A teacher should be able to demonstrate the same love to the students. No, it is impossible humanly. God should help us to have that love for our students. The love for students helps us to be self-sacrificial. 
It helps us to earnestly pray for our, our members. It helps us to go an extra mile. When we see some of our members are not coming to a Sabbath school, it helps us to go an extra mile to go and visit them and bring them back. The way Jesus Christ talked about the parable, parable that he went out and looked out for the, the lost sheep, the same way, because of the love that we have for our students, we go to an extra mile to go and look out, search, and bring them back. Without love, our words are just noise. We may be sharing great ideas, great insights, during a lesson study, but in the absence of that love for the people that we are teaching, we are just simply making noise. In Christ Object Lesson, page 57, again, Ellen White talks about how love can soften the hearts of our students. We may find someone in our class, members who, uh, who can be stubborn, who refuse to um, engage and refuse to learn, refuse to change, but she talks about the love will soften the stony heart. While logic may fail to move and arguments be powerless to convince, the love of Christ revealed in personal ministry may soften the stony heart so that the seed of truth can take root. Powerful this is. Sometimes we think when we're teaching, we, are a, we, we wanted to convince people, we wanted to help people to understand truth, and we think we need to present some logical sequence or thought process. We think we have to have a powerful argument, but Len White says, no, 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 it is not logic, it is not the argument that will make way, but it is a love that will soften the stony heart. It will prepare their hearts to receive the seed of truth. Powerful, my brothers and my sisters, I pray the Lord will help us to have the love of Christ in our heart as teachers so that we will have a positive influence upon our students. The second, caring and sympathetic. We talked about love, loving and lovable. And the second is caring and sympathetic for our students. Teachers should have that care and sympathy for their students. Had it not, Ellen White says, these are the pages, page 252. Had it not been for the sweet, sympathetic spirit that shone out in every look and word, he would not have attracted the large congregation that he did. Powerful this is. Jesus Christ, an ordinary carpenter's son, wouldn't go for any religious education, but still he was able to attract a large congregation because of his sweet and sympathetic spirit. Many thousands of them got attracted because of that sweet and sympathetic spirit. The teacher should exhibit the same spirit, caring, loving, sweet, sympathetic spirit towards our students. She writes, the true heart expression of Christ-like sympathy, given in simplicity, has power to open the doors of heart. I wish you were able to grasp these powerful inspirational uh, quotes that we are reading. She says, in order to help people to have an experience of their hearts being opened to the truth, it is through that sympathy, that care, that simplicity that helps the heart to open and that will enable them to receive the truth by the grace of God. The third, Jesus Christ was a personable and also he was approachable. So the teacher should be personable and approachable. Let me read a couple of quotes to you. Jesus was incorruptible, undefiled, yet in his life were mingled gentleness, meekness, sympathy, and love. The poorest were not afraid to approach him. You know, Jesus Christ was so simple. He was a man of principle. He was undefiled. He, but yet, he was still gentle. He was still meek. He was still loving. He was still sympathetic. And even the poorest and humblest people 
were not afraid to approach him. So the same way the teacher should be approachable, simple, kind, meek and gentle. While you, we may be very uh, strict in our, in our principle, but yet we also have to be approachable that people could come to us and be able to have that interaction with them. She goes on to write, he exercised the greatest tact and thoughtful, kind attention in his intercourse with the people. He was never rude, never needlessly spoke a severe word, never gave a needless pain to a sensitive soul. What a teacher he was. How many times during our class, when we, during our discussions, sometimes when we get uh, upset, when we may uh, give a rude response, but Jesus Christ, Ellen White says, never spoke a rude word, never spoke a severe word, never gave a needless pain to a sensitive soul. My brothers and my sisters, without such character, it will be impossible for us to truly help our members to have the change that Bible is teaching us. We, will be able, we won't be able to change the lives of people without having such qualities that we see in Jesus Christ. Our Savior's power was not in a strong array of sharp words that would pierce through his very through the very soul. It was his gentleness, his plain, unassuming manner that made him to conquer hearts. How can you win your students? How can you keep your students in the class? How can you help them to be coming regularly on time to your class? This character, unassuming manners, will enable us to conquer the hearts of the students. And students will be motivated, our members will be motivated to come to church for Sabbath school just because of the teacher. We love the teacher, amazing teacher, Christ-like teacher. I would like to go for the class. I don't want to miss the class. Now, this is possible only through a consecrated Christian. It is so important that as teachers, we dedicate our time, our life, uh, in prayer and study that God will change us first so that we can be an instrument in his hand in teaching our students. Every Sabbath school worker who has passed from death into life through the transforming grace of Christ will reveal the deep moving of the Spirit of God upon his own heart. The students, the members will be able to see that our lives have been changed through the power of God. That will be visibly seen. And we have to demonstrate through the grace of God. We have passed from death into life. We have life. And we wanted to share that life with others. The question comes. Very important question. How is such character developed? When I was putting these PowerPoints together, I was praying. Lord, help me to have such character. And without such character, without such qualities, I will never be useful. But the question comes to us, how is such character is developed in our lives? The first one I want to remind you, the only way that we could be able to develop such character is by having a living connection with God. On a daily basis, through the grace of God, we should have that living connection with God. Jesus declared, you read in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. It's very plain and straight. Our source of power, our source of life, our source of knowledge and everything that we require to be an effective soul winner, teacher, it is impossible without we abiding in Christ. 
without Jesus Christ, we can't do anything. Ellen White writes, this is not Ellen White, this is an author from Soul, winning teacher, that to lead others to Christ, a teacher must have a new and richer experience daily. Casual reading of the Sabbath school, uh, not having a connection with God, coming to church on a weekly basis and teaching the lesson will not have any impact on the students. A blind cannot lead the blind. But those who are teachers must have that new and richer experience on a daily basis. Your students, our students will be able to see that we have been in the very presence of God. Even before we speak, the students will know that we had been with God. Prayer, life of a teacher, is very important. You read in Mark chapter 135. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before day, daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. Just imagine the Son of God, while upon this earth, set aside a particular time. that He had a set time to pray. Before he ministered to the people, how much more we need prayers. So I would like to encourage the teachers. You should have a set time of prayer that you pray every day. Pray for yourself. Pray for your uh, uh, conversion. Pray for your growth, spiritual growth. And pray for your student. That prayer life will enable us to become an effective soul winner. How few parents and educators realize the fact that there can be a full development of mind and heart only by having a living connection with the source of all wisdom, power and holiness. So it is impossible, she simply says, Ellen White simply says, without our, our living connection with the source of wisdom and power and holiness that comes from God, without that living connection, we cannot fully develop the mind and heart of those who are under influence. I took time to explain to you the importance of having Christ-like character. Teacher as a person is very important. The teacher's character is important. We have a model to follow. We need to pray and ask Jesus Christ to help us to have the same attributes that he had so that we could have a positive influence upon our students. Now I wanted to focus next on uh, what teaching methods that we have to use in order to be an effective uh, soul winning teacher. First, we have to understand teaching is more than informing. It is not just on a Sabbath morning when you teach a lesson, you just go through the lesson and Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, just informing the students. not informing. Teaching ensures that student receive the knowledge, they understand the knowledge, they remember what they've been taught, they'll be able to apply their lessons in their personal life, and they're able to share with others. So teaching is not just merely kind of a giving information to students. The teacher's responsibility to make sure when the teacher is preparing the lesson, when the teacher is delivering the lesson, teacher is having in a mind or his mind to say that I wanted to make sure that my student will receive what I'm sharing. The student will be able to understand because of the simplicity. The students, when they leave the class, will be able to remember what has been taught. They should be able to apply the lesson in their personal life and there should be also a willingness to share. That is teaching. Because teaching, teaching changes people's life. Teaching is reaching hearts. It is not just merely convincing the mind, but is also reaching the heart. We read, we do not want, from Sabbath School Council, Ellen White, we do not want our Sabbath School conducted in such a way as to make hypocrites. 
the mechanical working of the Sabbath school is of little value. If the Spirit of God does not soften and mold the hearts of teachers and people. So our, our, our focus is not in the mechanical working of the Sabbath school, which has no value. But our focus is on the Spirit of God who does bring the, the heart into the softness and helping through our teaching by the grace of God to, to mold the hearts of our students and our teachers. She writes, your success will not depend so much upon your knowledge and accomplishment as upon your ability to find your way to the heart. So that as a teacher, our focus is now, how can I reach the heart of my students? How can I bring that change in the life of my student? That is our focus. So our success is not just merely transmitting knowledge, but our success is based upon how much we're able to go into the hearts of our students. Another important thing that we have to remember, while we are teaching the lesson, it is important that we create interest in the Bible. So the Sabbath school quarterly, the adult Sabbath school quarterly is only a guide for us to study a Bible. So actually what is taking place during our lesson study is we are studying Bible using the adult Sabbath school quarterly. It is a guide. So we have to ensure, we have to make sure that we are able to exert some influence upon our students students, our members, that they have interest in reading the scripture. Many of them, to be, to be quite safe, uh, some of our members, they don't read the Bible. They don't find any interest in reading the Bible. Many come to a Sabbath school without reading the Sabbath school quarterly. No personal prayer. There's no personal study time. In that kind of a situation, Sabbath school teacher is now responsible in his methodology to ensure there is an interest in reading the scripture. You have to create. We have to make sure the subjects that we are sharing, the topics that we are sharing, the lesson is shared in a very simple way. We don't want to make it very complicated. Ellen White again writes, you want simple words, plainly, clearly stated ideas. When you're preparing your lesson, you have to look into the lesson preparation to say uh, whether those language is clear and simple, whether the thought process is plain, whether students can understand, will my student understand what I'm sharing? Will they be able to comprehend the whole theme of the lesson study? If we don't have that kind of uh, intention, then we are actually uh, wasting and losing uh, our, our time. Another important thing that we have to consider when you're looking into the methodology of teaching, some of them are a reputation, is that we have to encourage discussion. It's not a moral law. It's kind of a difficult why, um, why many are not participating in our discussion, but, but we have to encourage as much as possible the teacher has to encourage the discussion. It is not the best plan for teachers to do all the talking, but they should draw out the class to tell what they know then let the teacher with a few brief points remarks or illustration impress the lesson upon their minds the teacher is encouraging the students to participate the members to participate in the discussion and draw from their contribution and then once those contribution has been done now the teacher is trying to brief very important points through illustration making some remarks and now to impress the less upon, lesson upon the minds of the students. That's quite important. In some schools, I'm so I'm sorry to say the custom prevails of reading the lesson from the lesson sheet. This should not be. We have heard this past two days. Another important thing that you have to consider as a teacher in your methodology, ask questions. Questions will help us to create discussions, you know. Um, when you're preparing a lessons, when you are preparing a lessons, the teacher should uh, should should write down some very important question. Usually you notice in your lesson study book on each day, there are always some questions. Read those questions. Try to answer this question. Um, sometimes we have to even 
try to simplify the question. If there is no question, um, work, work in a way that you can draw some questions from the lesson to share with the class so that they will engage in discussion. But we have to take few things in consideration. The questions has to be quite uh, light, you know, um, and the question must be focusing on the text. We should never ask overly broad questions. Sometimes we could ask the student to explain the meaning of the text. And we could also ask them to draw some application from the text. Those kind of questions will really engage the, the students and also will help others to participate as well. So while we may ask questions, you have to make sure the questions are taken from the text, looking for application and the meaning of the text as well. Make practical application of the truth. We learn something. Then the question should be what we do with what we learn. How can we apply what we learned in our, in our life? So the teachers should not miss this aspect of the lesson study. If you have to be intentional when you're preparing, if you're teaching for 30 minutes, you're teaching for 40 minutes, be intentional. I wanted to draw some application of the truth that has been shared week. Let the teacher, Glenn White says, lay plans to make a practical application of the lesson. It takes time. You, we have to prepare. We have to sit and prepare to look out for the practical application. Sometimes we do have applications mentioned in a lesson, but it is also good for us to draw more simpler ones. The exercise should become altogether what the Lord would have them. Seasons of deep conviction of sin and heart reformation. So the, the questions the practical application should enable our members to do a soul search, to bring about conviction. There should be a heart transformation because of the application that we are drawing from the lesson. Remember what I mentioned earlier, this Sabbath school is a continual education program that helps to see moral transformation, a change of life. You're helping, we are helping our members who have joined our church to become a disciple maker. We are helping them to become a soul winner. For that, we have to be very intentional when we are preparing our lessons. We want to make sure that we are prayerfully considering the application of the lesson so that there will be conviction. When, when students leave the Sabbath school class, they have to go with conviction by the grace of God souls will be convicted. What shall I do to be saved? Another important thing that we have to remember when it comes to methodology, pray for and with the class members. We have to include prayer time during our study. Yes, we always talk about the limited time that we may have for the lesson study, 40, 50 minutes, but still spend few minutes uh, in praying for one another, praying with the class, that gives an opportunity for us to teach our members to pray. They will also remember to pray for others. We could take some prayer requests from the class. Maybe if it's 10, 15, take some prayer requests and we pray for those prayer requests. And we also help our members to think about their friends and families. It is a soul winning experience. We are thinking about friends and families. There is something that we want to pray for our families and members. And then the members can go and share with the friends and families during our Sabbath school lesson. We are specially prayed for you. And that gives an opportunity for them to, to bring them to the Sabbath school. When the prayers are answered, then there can be a time of testimony in the Sabbath school. A few minutes. So we have to use this the Sabbath school lesson study to help our members to be soul winners by beginning uh, praying for the for our friends and families. Teachers, meet with your class, pray with them and teach them how to pray. Let the heart be soft and the petition short and simple but earnest, sincere. We don't want that to be a mechanical, but we want it to be sincere, very short but simple. We are earnestly praying for people's prayer request. 
another important thing is that visiting and personally laboring for our our members those attend this class you know many times when we talk about um, not men not many people are coming for sabbath school why can't we take few names who are not attending class go and personally visit them pray with them individually personally by laboring with them will help them to to um, come back to our sabbath school classes a true educator will take a personal interest in each people we have to know their names those who come those who are missing and those we we need to go and visit is there anybody in the class who may need a bible study maybe you notice in your class somebody is struggling to know the basic teachings of our, of our church personally contacting them and asking do you need a bible study i'm happy to teach you outside of class that kind of a personal interest in each people will be an amazing thing that we can do for our students the lord will recognize and bless the humble worker if you are thus you will show a care for your scholars students by making special efforts for their salvation you will come close to them in a loving sympathy visiting them at their homes and learning their true condition by conversing with them concerning their experience in the things of god you will bear them in the arms of your faith to the throne of father amazing it is we will never know the true condition of our members unless until we pay a visit for them when we go to the home when we sit with them when we talk with them we will know the true condition that will draw our hearts close to them we will be able to show that sympathy and kindness and gentleness to them we will be able to earnestly pray for the situation that will transform the lives of individuals it is not just coming on sabbath morning and teaching the lesson the work of a consecrated teacher is much more than that finally we have to also remember that one of the important thing in the methodology of teaching is that we have to be intentional we are teaching people to share the faith we are not just teaching for them to have the knowledge but we wanted to ensure that what they receive they share with others so when we are sharing the lesson study with them when we are giving some illustration when we are sharing the, the bible thoughts the teacher has to be intentional to say i would like to see my students share the faith because end of the day when we are educating when we are teaching our our members we wanted to help them to become soul winners for jesus christ it is certainly important that we become acquainted with the reasons of our faith but those most important knowledge to be gained is an experiential knowledge of what it means to be born again the great want in our sabbath school is a want of the light all through the ranks needed men and women who have learned at the feet of jesus what is truth and how to present the truth to others this is the greatest want so the teacher sabbath school teacher consecrated teacher is very intentional is that teaching the students to learn the truth and also to present the truth to others i would like to uh, pause here before i finally talk about the global tmi how this biblical strategy will help improve our sabbath school i wanted to pause here for a minute and uh, if there is any questions i'm quite happy to take this questions and if there is no questions i could continue with what i was sharing yes i see an ant uh, somebody is managing if i am not able to see yes uh, uh, david you could you could ask a question Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the insightful seminar today. Um, I have a few points I'd like to discuss. Yes, um, please. Three points. Um, not specifically everything that you've mentioned here, but um, regarding the availability of the Sabbath school lesson materials, 
Many of us receive the books only a week or three before the quarter begins. Mm. So this timing poses challenges for teachers in planning and preparation. Personally, mm. I run a ministry where I present a lesson daily on YouTube and receive the materials um, um, earlier would greatly mm. enhance my ability to pre-record effectively. Like the big guys like uh, Doug Batchelor, Yes. And uh, hope a Sabbath school, clearly they do receive it long before time. Is there a possibility for us to receive these lessons a month or two in advance? Uh, that's my I mean, first of two questions. Would you like to okay. first uh, talk about that one? Yes, I will talk about that question. Any, any organization or any um, individual who are uh, producing uh, resource material in advance for their congregation will have an access to the Sabbath school quarterly well in advance. All that is required of you, uh, either you contact your, your local union or conference, just send us a request to the GC, Sabbath school persons department, definitely will be able to work on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that you have our email address. I will post the email address. You could just drop an email and then we'll follow it through. Definitely we'll be able to help on that. If you're producing, resource materials for your field yeah um okay i'm not able to Could I answer your question david i'm not able um i cannot david you're muted yeah i know they they thank you i could not unmute myself for a moment there um okay. sorry sorry about that secondly i appreciate the discussion on teaching um, methodologies uh, um, it's essential uh, uh, to acknowledge that a teacher with a strong character can still use less effective methods. Yeah. Uh, what you've presented is very helpful, but what specific strategies or resources can the church provide to support teachers in um, uh, enhancing their teaching approaches? Yeah. I mean, we. I mean, I, I worked in a local conference before coming to general conference uh, i've worked in north england conference both north england conference and south england conference our sabbath school uh, directors had uh, um, three to four module of sabbath school teachers training materials they model module one module two they really help the teachers to our local teachers to develop their skills so i'm going to again post my um, email address on the group. There are resource materials, special specific trainings are available for those teachers who like to improve their skills available to them. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And of course, it's not always possible to present it in all languages available. But additionally, yeah. I just want to mention, I've noticed that the teacher's edition of the lesson is mm -hmm. only available in Afrikaans. I don't know about other languages, but in, in English, and uh, not available in Afrikaans, Zulu, Sutu, or any of mm -hmm. the other African languages. Now, this language barrier, uh, barrier can hinder effective teaching and, mm -hmm. and, and understanding within the class environment. Uh, what step can the church take to ensure these resources are accessible in our local languages? Is there plans to do that? Um, what's possible there? And that's my last question. No. Thank you for the answers. Yes. Yeah. Now, the General Conference produces resources in English language, and it encourages the division to, to, to help those materials translated into other languages. So we do have a, a regular conversation with our division leaders. If such request comes, we assist them uh, with what, wherever it is possible to encourage them to be translated as many languages as possible. I can give one example. Recently, we have the global TMI church planner that was produced by General Conference in English language. But now we have made, with the help of the division, we have made that available more than 20 languages. From one division alone, we have made that available for 14 languages. We work with the division, we provide them the resources that they need so that it can be translated. It's a partnership between General Conference and the division to know what language we have to translate and how we could help in the process so that's kind of a partnership that we really do that, that.
Thank you, David. And um, we have other two hands, and somebody help me to kind of uh, monitor who's raised first. Is it uh, Sam, the first one, then Craig, and then Joshai? Yeah. You want to unmute um, yourself? Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Um, this has really been very informative. Um, my question is that um, teachers, you find that some teachers are naturally um, influential. They naturally draw people to themselves. Yeah. Now, as a Sabbath school superintendent, do you have any advice on how to balance the class so that I, I try and keep it small? Because what you normally would have is that people would flow to this particular teacher who is influential, um, who easily draws uh, people to himself or herself, um, who is able to interact and reach out as you have explained. Now, what is the advice um, to balance the class and to keep it small so that we are able to have a proper discussion during Seb, um, the lesson study time? And at the same time, not to offend the people, because sometimes when you take that decision as a superintendent to say, um, I think that class has now become too big and we need to um, you know, cut the class so that it, it goes back to a small, um, class that is manageable that we can have a discussion, you know, around with everyone. What would be your advice in terms of that? Okay, let me begin with uh, first my response to that particular aspect of the question is that uh, I will never get discouraged if my class is very small. I'm sometimes will be very happy there are only few in the class. Whenever I'm traveling to different churches and I will choose to go and sit the class, which is in small in number. So a teacher should never get discouraged. The numbers are low. I understand that. The second thing, when I served as a local church pastor, even in my local conference when I was pastoring, we encourage the Sabbath school superintendent along with the help of the board to, to have the class already been assigned. You know, we used to do this thing in the past. Um, the students, the members know which class they are supposed to be going. So it's, there should be a plan already in place, rather than to allow the members to randomly to go to any particular class. You know, obviously, you know, people not only go to larger class because the teacher is good influential, but they also go because if they go to a larger class, they don't need to talk. So they go for different reasons. So if the Sabbath school superintendent, along with the church board, if you could plan, so we have 100 members, out of 100 members, 40 are coming, 60 are not coming, but you're not neglecting those who are not coming. You want to make sure every member in the church, every visitor have been assigned a particular class. And then we read those uh, lists and we put the list display. We encourage members as much as possible to go to that particular class, the second answer. Third is, this is where it is very important the Sabbath school teachers on a regular basis go through what David was talking about is a training. We help our teachers to grow in their skills. And um, uh, I, I, I know it is too much for us to do. Even with the teachers, we have a Zoom and Friday night or Wednesday night, all the teachers come together. Let's share our thoughts together. You know, and uh, make sure there is a collective learning experience among the teachers will also help that to that to address that particular problem. In a simple answer for that is that the, those who are having less numbers should not get discouraged, but the Sabbath school superintendent should put in place plans to make sure you're not just allowing the members to go and choose where they want to sit, but you are actually assigning them to a particular class. Hope that that's helpful to you. Craig. Thank you, uh, Pastor, for your presentation. I really appreciate and enjoyed tonight uh, in particular. I would just like to ask about uh, reporting. Um, you know, the old way of doing things was, is to report how many uh, Bible studies you've done, how many leaflets you've handed out. Yes. Now, 
people's excuse for not doing that is that the Bible verse said one should not let the one hand know what the other one is doing. In other words, you shouldn't brag about what you did. Where, quite frankly, I believe um, we should mention the names of the people that we gave it to so that we can pray for them. In the yes, you're group. right. Maybe, maybe you could give more detail there. I mean, definitely. Second, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. And my second question is, uh, Sabbath school superintendent stats, okay? Or quite frankly, any stats that you are sending up, we never get any feedback on those stats. So mm -hmm. for me, um, in plain English, there's no benefits to sending anybody the stats except to see it at some session, union session or whatever session that that person conglomerates all those stats. You look at them for five seconds on the board or a minute, and, and that's the end. Um, is there any feedback that I we could find, or there is uh, no feedback? Thanks so much. I'm I'm not sure about your your second question, Craig. I will come back to you on that. I, I'm not sure about that. I'll get back to you. I'm good. Again, post my email address. Drop me an email. I'll get back to that particular question. But I'm going back to the first one that you asked about, about uh, sharing and reporting uh, among the class what has been done during the week. It is very positive. It is very important for us to do that. When the class is mission focused, you know, sometimes what we do, our in our minds, in our mind, all that we want to focus is to uh, share the lesson with this class. That is. That is a very important section of our Sabbath school, but that is not the only thing that we are supposed to be doing in our Sabbath school lesson study time. I talked about the prayer time, then testimonial, a brief fellowship, and also talk about what we really did during the week, how many people we, we visited, how many people lit literature we are given. And that will give us a, an important basis for us to pray. So I may say, I went and gave this leaflet to my friend Caleb. I would like you to pray so that Caleb will read the, the leaflet that I gave. So that gives. So we wanted to encourage those activities are brought back to Sabbath school. And that's what will bring life to a Sabbath school, not just listening. I mean, I may be wrong. What I'm going to say to you, say to all, is that our members, if they wanted to thoroughly just to focus on lesson study, there are other platforms available for them where they'll teach the lessons. But when it comes to our Sabbath school during our Sabbath service in, in person, in church, we have to do more than that to build that fellowship, to build that prayer time, um, build that enthusiasm so that we come to church in person for Sabbath school. That's very important that you mentioned. Thank you, Craig. We have uh, two more hands raised. And whoever is the first, you could just unmute yourself. Uh, I'm Josiah. Yes, please. Um, good evening, Pastor Daniel and uh, everybody. Good evening, sir. Uh, thank, you. thank you for uh, educational you know, material you've given us. It was really an eye opener. But just some observation may be in the form of one or two questions. Yes. We have spoken more about uh, a Sabbath school teacher. Yeah. Uh, as of recent, uh, that word uh, was going away. The Sabbath school teachers were now Sabbath school facilitators. How do you <clears throat> explain the two? Because Sabbath school teacher would be doing the talking most of the time while a facilitator will maybe just make a summary for the lesson, then allow the students or the, the attendees to, 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 to participate as well. Um, because I've got a challenge with that. Um, um, the, the members of my class I'll be teaching, for example, these will be mostly baptized members. Now, if I continue teaching them, when will they be empowered as well? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, secondly, um, maybe this one is just a general one, Pastor Daniel. 
Uh, I see our church generally, we have got trainings on Wednesdays as well as on Fridays. Mm. Are we neglecting the, uh, to allow you know, the members of the church to go for Wednesday Vespers and also for Sabbath opening? Mm. Uh, uh, I'm mentioning this um, after you have said that as a Sabbath school teacher, I should be exemplary you know, in everything. Mm. Now, here I'm seated and I'm not, I'm not seen at Best Pass on Wednesdays. I'm not seen at Sabbath opening because I'm attending training. Uh, what kind of example would I, uh, an influence would I you know, exert on the others? Thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. Thank you for your observation. Let me go back to your first question that you asked about the term facilitator. Uh, Sabbath school teacher, Sabbath school facilitator. Um, the intention, my understanding, the intention of using the term facilitator to encourage discussion, interaction among the, um, the students, um, uh, not just to have a monologue. The teacher is not just there to teach, but not encouraging their students to participate. Maybe that's an intention of using the word facilitator. But at the same time, we also have to be very careful the teacher is not just merely there to encourage everybody to share what they wanted to share and not giving any direction or any purposeful uh, learning experience that is taking place in the class. So that is the reason the teacher is there. Um, you may call facilitator or a teacher. The teacher is there to encourage discussion, asking questions, there is a participation, but at the same time, the teacher is also responsible to make sure truth is taught in the class. The teacher is the responsible person to ensure there is a there's a focused discussion that we are talking about the lesson study, we are talking about the Bible scripture, we are not all over the place. So um, I'm 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 hope I'm clear with you. It is not the term, but the task that is done, the way it is done is very important. Yeah. And the second question that you asked about about um, having trainings when we have um, uh, prayer meetings, when we have Friday Vespers, uh, is that where possible, uh, we encourage such things to avoid so that we don't give uh, a, a wrong signal to a membership that we could use these important church meeting times for the training. So where possible, we, we try to uh, discourage there can be some exceptional situation that we may have. Uh, we should never make it as a, a regular practice. Sometimes what happens, let me make this point. Sometimes what we think, we seem to think people will come only on these days. People will come only on Sabbath to church. Let's do everything on Sabbath. We have to discourage that kind of an approach. Yeah. Mm. And the teacher has to be an example to show to the students. Hope that answers your question. I think that we have one more hand. Mm. Last one. Good evening, everyone. Thank Good you so evening. much, Pastor, for the presentation. And uh, it is a, a great benefit. But I've got one, just one question regarding the lessons. Who's responsible for buying the lessons for teachers? And I, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay, oh, oh, oh. and where does the the teachers get the budget for for lessons? Because if you are a teacher, it's impossible to ask the student to have the the their lessons handbook, the hard copy lessons, whereas you yourself a teacher who don't have a, 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 a hard copy for the lessons. Thank you. Yeah, I think that will be a decision of the local church. We won't be able to give instruction how that need to be done. The local church um, treasurer, the church board decides how they're going to provide uh, resources to the teacher. The Sabbath school superintendent at the beginning of the year may have a plan to, uh, to put a budget together to say, Okay, we would like to provide uh, the teachers with the resource materials and present the budget to the uh, to the church board and 
how see how the church board responds to that some churches may say we yes we are happy to do it some churches may say we don't have sufficient funds to do it that's a decision made by the local church but the process is the sabbath school superintendent at the beginning of the year may put a budget together and look into the need is there a need for the teachers to have the lesson study guide especially when it comes to the children's sabbath school which they may not they may not they may not need it but they still have to buy you know for example adult sabbath school any way we are going to buy but when it comes to children's sabbath school we may not really need so in that kind of a circumstances if the church board decides the sabbath school superintendent presents the plans to the church board to make a decision And uh, did you have a second question, sister? Okay. Um, Pastor, if there is no other question, do you mind I could take uh, 15 minutes to share about the global TMI? Is there any other question before I just share briefly about the global TMI to you? Okay, um, I won't take more than 10 minutes just to uh, share. The global TMI is the, is the general conference initiative uh, for a total member involvement, a biblical strategy for disciple making evangelists. What is global TMI? It is a call for every church, every member to be actively involved in disciple making evangelism using Christ's method. Exactly what we talked about the Sabbath school. Sabbath school is a uh, continual religious education program for the church, helping members to become disciple makers. The same way, the global TMI is a call for every church, every member to be actively involved in disciple making using Christ's method. And the global TMI is, is, is promoting very important cultural changes. Global TM is called for a for a cultural change. Uh, the first one, the real character of the church, is measured not by the high profession she makes, not by the names enrolled on her books, but by what she actually doing for the master, by the number of her persevering faithful workers. So the first cultural change uh, is is a success is not measured by the number of um, not by number of baptism, but number of workers, the first cultural change. I did mention to you, we are not just looking at Sabbath school, just mere numbers. We are not measuring the success of Sabbath school based upon how many come on Sabbath. Even only 20%, 30% of members are coming for Sabbath school, but still we want to make sure we develop those individuals to become workers for Christ. So first, that's a culture. Change. Second, personal ministry is a priority and public evangelism is combined for the best result. So the global TMI is encouraging that every member is engaged in personal ministry. The Sabbath school, same thing they're doing. The Sabbath school teacher is there to teach the students to help them to grow, to become the soul winners, that they will engage in personal ministry. That's what we exactly we see in the church manual as well. He's talking about every church board as to ensure there is an active, ongoing disciple-making plan in the church. The third cultural change that Global TMA is talking about, ongoing, active, disciple-making plan needs to be established in every church, that every ministry in the church are engaged in disciple-making plan. For that, first, we want to ensure there's a spiritual revival, there is an interest review process when when members when visitors come to a church how do we really help them to become disciple of jesus christ and they should be provided the church should provide for the membership the personal evangelism training to be provided the disciple making process includes five important steps first is we prepare the soil we even before we share the truth we wanted to make sure the soil is ready to receive the truth once the soil is prepared, then we plant the truth in their hearts to, to test the soil, to whether they respond positively to the, to the truth. Once they respond, once you see there is a response, then you want to cultivate that through Bible study. That's the green one, cultivating through Bible study. Once it is cultivated, then we 
work on the harvesting, helping them to make a decision. Finally, we want to preserve those who have been harvested. So prepare, plant, cultivate, harvest, and preserve. But most of the time, what we do, there is a lot of emphasis on harvest, evangelistic meeting, but we don't really prepare or plant or cultivate the individuals before they make the decision. So how this journey takes place? First, we make friends with people. We can invite people for a Sabbath school, you know, our friends and neighbors. In our small school groups, it'll be much, much easier for people to come. The teacher is well equipped, well trained to handle the situation. The, the class members know they have visitors in the class. So you're mindful what you say, how you say, you're bringing friends. First is friendship interest. Once the friendship interest is made, then we wanted to help them to have a spiritual interest. Spiritual interest. How do you know people have spiritual interest? How will you know, uh, how will you develop spiritual interest? That just by planting seeds, sharing testimonies, offering prayers, giving literatures will help to create spiritual interest among people. Once spiritual interest is created, then once you see there is an interest, then you cultivate that interest through Bible studies. The Sabbath school is the best place for members to learn how to give Bible studies. The Sabbath school lesson study gives opportunities for us to thoroughly know the word, know how to share the word. They're trained there. So the members, once they see somebody is having a spiritual interest, then we develop that interest through study. Then once we studied with them, when they show interest in decision making, that decision is harvest during evangelistic meeting. That is harvest, baptism interest. After baptism interest, then we have the important phase that neglected in most places is how we preserve the individual being joined the church. Somebody has made decision through baptism, but now it is a responsibility to help them to become workers for Jesus Christ. Again, Sabbath school plays a very important role in this place, in this work. So my final slide, prepare through health and friendship building ministry. We plan the truth through literature, media, and invitation ministries. We cultivate that through Bible studies. Then we're able to harvest through evangelistic meeting and we preserve through new member disciple making evangelism. Now, what you find most of the time, we are we focus on the harvest, the fourth one, the yellow one. We may be doing some preparatory work, but there is most of the places we, we neglect the planting, the cultivating and preserving. That is the reason a lot of our members seems to be uh, leaving uh, uh, after making the decision. In order to ensure that there's a full disciple making process, the church should look into the whole ministries, the whole ministry plan, the church should look into it, see whether they have everything in place by the grace of God. You know, um, we wherever we are going, we are trying to uh, uh, promote the um, the global TMI disciple making evangelism oh, uh, across the globe. There are a lot of churches are getting on board. We also have the church planner available uh, in multiple language for the church to sit and to ensure that they are able to um, look into the church ministries, whether they have all the full full disciple making plans in place if something is missing bring them together and to ensure that we go through the every phase of the disciple making plans in our church this is a long presentation but i thought let me briefly just share little uh, highlights of this um uh, we will send those details to the sabbath school personal ministry directors in your union and division they'll be able to share with you more data thank you for that extra time that you gave to me yeah. Pastor, if any questions, I'm happy to take and then I will hand over the time back to you. Thank you yes. so, much, so much. Yeah. I think there are two hands are raised up, Craig and uh, Sir Frank. Okay, I think it is Sir Craig, Frank. You want to unmute yourself? 
Okay. Craig, would you like to ask any questions before we close? Uh, I can, uh, although Sir Frank was first. Yes, I was waiting I for Frank to ask. I was just uh, wondering, Pastor, if you're willing to share the two PowerPoints uh, on the chat with us. If yeah, that definitely, would be I will do that one. I will do that one. Thank you. Certainly. And your email? Thank you. Yes, I'll put that as well on the chat. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, because I was struggling to unmute to yourself. Myself, yeah. No, my question is on the issue of what you have touched. The, the success is measured by the number of church members who are involved in the TMI program than on the uh, uh, baptismal. Uh, I don't know if I got it to uh, well, but when I read and listened to that, it sounded as if we measure success based on the input than on the output. Yes, you're right. May you, may, you, may you clarify that point? Yes. So usually we measure success based upon number of baptism. That's that's the but from 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 what we read from the Bible and also from the spirit of prophecy, the true success is not just merely measured over number of people are baptized, but number of people are made disciples because our call is to go and make disciples. So our work is not completed when people make decision for Christ through baptism. Our work begins, if you read Matthew 28, chapter verse 19 and 20, after, after somebody has made decision, then Christ says, now teach them to observe all things that I commanded you. So there is an important work that need to be done after somebody has made decision. That work to help somebody to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ, someone now who received the faith is also willing to share the faith with others. So that's where. So the success of the church is not just number of people of baptized. We praise God for that, but also how many people that we are developing in our churches to become the workers for Jesus Christ. That's what exactly that means. Yeah. Oh, all right. Thank you. Pastor, if there is no other question, then uh... <clears throat> thank you so much, Elda. Yes, sir. The Lord has blessed us in a very special way. Our members are excited and they want more and more and more. Um, thank you for making yourself very much um, available Thank and willing Lord. to serve the Lord. It's, it's a joy to serve with you. Um, my secretary have just sent me a few here. Question like, are we still following the Sabbath school themes every Sabbath, for example? First Sabbath of the month, evangelism. Second Sabbath, investment. Third Sabbath, Beth and, and thanks. I'm sorry, Elder, I didn't hear the last part of what you share. Um, are we still following the, the, the Sabbath school themes, such like the first Sabbath um, of the month is evangelism. Second Sabbath, investment third sabbath beth and thanks okay i'm 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 my, my apologies i'm not sure about that answer i will get back to you on that i'm i'm thinking it is more of local uh, division or union making the recommendation but i'll find out from the the sabbath school department and get back to you on that yeah thank you so much thank you so much it, it is my prayer that early next year we go through the same exercise focusing on another component of the Sabbath school. Um, it is my observation that Sabbath school has been neglected uh, for a very long time. In this part of the world, after COVID, you know, for a number of months, there, were, there was no church services. Mm. Our people were worshiping separately there and there. 
So when we came back, we came ne- most of us, we are never the same. So we need to revive. Some churches are still closed. So members are still missing. So we need to make uh, some effort and make Sabbath exciting, our Sabbath school exciting, so that those that have come will fail not to share their experience with others so that others, when they hear good news, they will come in numbers. You have done a fantastic job, my elder. And again, uh, early next year, let's let's do the same. Then again, maybe a week later, we focus on, on personal ministries just to revive and get our people um, geared for, 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 for evangelism. Thank you so much, Elder. I will Thank then you. ask um, uh, Pastor Eugene, who is the SSPM uh, uh, at Cape Town in Cape, Cape Conference, SSPM, just to say one thing, then uh, and, and, and thank you again for the, on behalf of everyone of us, and then close with prayer. Okay, two things before they pray. First, first thing is that we, we had a kind of a very broad um, focus during this three days of training. We gave them a kind of a taste, uh, the importance, the elements of Sabbath school. Um, probably there is a more need for us to focus more on the teacher's training aspect of it how to deliver the lessons, how to respond. So maybe there are a couple of modules are there for the teacher's training. We will be able to have the conversation. The the participant can look out in the future that we will more focus on the teachers as well. That's first. the second thing. Um, I need a little time to copy the chat because there are a lot of email address has been posted. If you just leave a few minutes, I'll copy the chat box. And I'm going to, I'm not able to upload my presentation on the chat, but I'm going to email you, Pastor, so that you could share with the participant. But I'll be able to send to all those emails that have been posted. Um, Pastor Craig um, Baxter has been requesting as well. Uh, If you could just drop an email, I will send you the presentation. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, my man. God bless you. Pastor Eugene? Yes, no, thank you so much, Pastor and uh, Pastor Daniel. Uh, It was a very good exercise and uh, much needed. We really appreciate the work that you have done. Um, Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, And then Pastor Nguenia, thank you so much for coordinating the... um, the sessions, it's so needed in our, like you have already mentioned, in our um, area. And I'm looking forward to an early next year after the nominations and everyone has already gone through um, uh, the the electing new members and SSPM directors. So it will be very needed uh, come next year, 2025, January. Um, yeah, let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Our kind and gracious Father in heaven, Lord, you remain to be powerful. You remain in control and we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to go through these sessions. We know, Lord, that um, the Sabbath school really is the heart of a mission and if we get it right, um, then we will have a good um, foundation and platform um, to evangelize. We pray, Lord, that you may revive our Sabbath schools, and um, we pray that you may also help us in when we are electing members to serve in these capacities that we um, do it with much sensitivity to the position and seriousness, and may we take it as important as the election of a, a pastor for a district. We ask, Lord, that you may be with um, all the presenters. We thank you that you have used them in such a powerful way, and we ask that you may be with them and their respective families, the time they've committed to ensure that we are enriched um, intellectually. We praise you for that. And we also pray, Lord, that our time here each night may not be in vain, but what we received may also have a transforming power in our life. Amen. Pray, Father, that you may um, be with us through the unknown night, and uh, please take care of us and um, 
give us enough faith, Lord, to continue on this journey and the information we receive, Lord, may it be good for our ministries and even our personal ministries. And now, Lord, we pray for good night's rest. And if it's your will to wake us up tomorrow, Father, we look forward to it. But even if we don't have that privilege and opportunity to wake up, may it be on that glorious day when you do appear that none of us may be found wanting. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. And we pray that through our ministries, others may be reached and touched. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, um, Elder Daniel. God bless you, my man. Thanks, God everyone, you, for making these three days exciting.